but what I find most thrilling is I'm not, I'm not writing anymore. I figured 40 books is enough, I'm done. Uh, what I'm interested in the research and the contemplative research above all. And so I've been striving for 13 years to create a center for contemplative research. And we have a little one, it's just a seed, but it started in Tuscany, Italy. And now we have 110 acres or about 45 hectares in the state of Colorado, 8,000 feet elevation. And we started, we have 11 cabins. We plan to build a lot more. And so it's centerforcontemplativeresearch.org, Center for Contemplative Research. And the institute I started almost oh, 17 years ago, the Santa Barbara Institute, sbinstitute.com, shows the background for all of this. We've, done, we've run or co-sponsored a number of really rather high profile first rate scientific studies, cultivating emotional, um, cultivating emotional balance goes back to the year 2000 with the very eminent psychologist Paul Ekman and the Shamata project which was initially my idea going back 13 years so the Santa Barbara Institute has been involved in some first-rate scientific research but where I think the cutting edge is is the kind of research we're anticipating at this incredibly beautiful site a hermitage that had been a Krishna hermitage for about 35 years and they were very happy to sell it to us well we'll bring together Dzogchen and methods for developing samadhi, and methods for developing bhajana, and for cultivating or unveiling our capacity for compassion. And we'll bring this together with first-rate research by psychologists, neuroscientists, physicists, and I think we may do something really groundbreaking here. And all that's required is not any leap of faith at all, not a leap of faith into materialism, not a leap of faith into reincarnation or karma or God, but an open mind and a spirit of what William James called radical empiricism. But set all our assumptions aside, they may be valid, and then we'll hold on to them, but let's go in with a fresh mind, an open mind, and be willing to question all of our assumptions. And those that are true will wind up being be seen to be truer, and those that are false will go the way of the dinosaurs. They'll just go extinct and become memories. So I think this is where the real juice is. And to end on a larger note, I think all of us, like yourself, myself, are really concerned about the world and are intelligent. We're informed about the impact of 7.8 billion human beings we're having on the planet. We know this has been building up for about 150 years since the Industrial Revolution. And it also has to be, and I think it's no coincidence, the rise of materialism, uh, mid 19th century. Uh, but the effect on the environment is utterly catastrophic and it's not slowing down. We burned more carbon fuel last year than ever, ever before. And that's with the full knowledge that we're destroying the planet with it, with global climate change. And so if we are to preserve human civilization through the rest of this century, because it is either to be gone or we will solve the problem by the end of the century, it's that dramatic and that urgent. There needs to be a fundamental shift. And I have so much admiration for science and technology my own life, the fact that we have this conversation, benefits of scientific technology, and I give the credit where credit is due. It's fantastic. But all the science and technology we have is enough to solve all the impact, all the detriment we're doing the environment and we're not taking advantage of it. And religion, there are religious leaders like the Pope, very conscientious, every very wise, every comment he makes about the environment, socially responsible, Dalai Lama, keen advocate, of environmental preservation in the green. And yet, we're not paying attention. You know, billions of Christians not paying attention, Buddhists not doing that much damage, aren't so many of us. Um, if we are to save human civilization and save the planet for other species as well, we wiped out 40% of the wildlife in the last 50 years. Then there has to be something really deep, a fundamental paradigm shift in which we radically alter, revolutionize our very sense of who we are, the role of humanity in the universe, and not with leaps of faith, but with a union of the best of science and the best, I believe, of contemplative inquiry and see that the potentials of the human mind, one could say actually are literally infinitely vaster than anything we've envisioned in modern Eurocentric civilization. Potentials for awakening, uh, for meaning, for, for liberation, for transformation, are beyond anything we've possibly imagined in all of Western civilization. And it does not mean converting to Buddhism or converting to Dzogchen, but going deeper and deeper into our own heritage and finding that we have been sitting on treasures all along, hidden in plain sight and not noticed. 
So I believe we urgently need a fundamental paradigm shift that will identify and highlight the deepest common ground among the great contemplative traditions of the world, the Taoist, the Jewish, the Buddhist, and so forth, and go to the very depth, the cutting edge of modern science. And I think that is, in terms of the actual nature of reality itself, is not found in biology or chemistry. It really is found in the most cutting edge branches of modern physics, especially quantum mechanics. And with a fundamental shift on a whole way of viewing reality, having an impact on our values, what is a value? What can really bring us the kind of happiness and fulfillment we seek? And how can we often retreat each other, the environment, other species? It has to be a very deep shift. And I think we're ripe for it. And I think Dzogchen may, put, may, may be a catalyst for that, to click this over and to advance science beyond our wildest dreams, advance contemplative inquiry beyond our wildest dreams and flourish as we never have in all of recorded human history, flourish together, the Chinese and the Indians, the Europeans and the South Americans, Australians and so on. I think there is a very, very luminously bright future ahead if we can only see it's there.